What's up, people? We're going to take it back to the early 1900s. The year 1912, 23-year-old Dennis Meehan was on trial for murder. Now, during this time, he was the boss of the White Hand Gang. And if you don't know anything about the Black Hand Gang, that was a group of Italians that would extort businesses. Now, the White Hand Group was now an Italian, mostly Irish. Now, as a boss, he would make his soldiers kick up some type of money they made on the streets. He took a certain percentage. And if you didn't kick up, or if you tried to hold out, you would pay with your life. Now, John Maroney was one of his soldiers that moved up the ranks. He became captain of one of the factions of the White Hand Gang and started to fill himself. Now, he was a great earner. He was a master safe cracker. He could get a safe open within minutes. So he was walking around with his pockets heavy. Now, the problem was he didn't want to kick up. Next thing you know, Meehan and three others were charged with the murder of Maroney. Now, during this trial, the courtroom was crowded with gangsters. The cops were called and they was in the courtroom deep, but they still was outnumbered with Meehan's supporters. With fear that there would be a riot if things didn't go in Meehan's favor. All three men were acquitted. The crowd of supporters cheered and party all night. Meehan's reputation grew and he felt like the man. Now, they was heavy in Brooklyn, muscling in on everything. If you wanted to keep what you had, you had to get busy. He was murdering anything in his way. A young Al Capone was operating in Brooklyn at the time. Meehan knew he couldn't be successful if both men were split in the pot. He wanted it all to himself. Plus, he saw him as a threat, so he put a hit out on Capone. Now, that was just one of the reasons Capone was sent to Chicago. Now, with Capone out the way, Meehan became the dock boss controlling the Brooklyn waterfront. Everybody had to pay tribute. If you wanted to unload or load a ship or truck, you had to report first to Meehan under the Manhattan Bridge. Now, if they refused to pay, the gang would just steal whatever they could take. And if it couldn't be moved, they would just set it on fire and let it burn in the East River. And the National Longshoresmen Association would hire the White Hand Gang to kill or threaten a New York City dock company employee who refused to pay their union dues. Now, any trouble a union official will get will be handled immediately. Anyone needed a job or needed to get someone lined, they needed to see me hand. Now, and even though he was the boss, he did things a little bit different. See, he didn't just sit back and collect money like the average boss would do. He was front line with his soldiers. He would go on scores with his men, robberies, hijackings, the whole nine. He had a leadership mentality since his teens. He was pitting in work. He was very hungry. I guess it was in his blood. The cop described him as the most desperate gang leader in Brooklyn. Now, March 31st, 1920, as Meehan and his wife were relaxing, and with the grandma and the son in the living room, five guys entered the apartment. A total of five shots were fired. One passed through Meehan's head into his wife's shoulder. The man dashed out the apartment building into a truck. Now, the grandma and her son wasn't harmed, but Meehan died right on the spot, while his wife will later recover. Now, three years later, she would tell the police that up-and-comer gangster Wild Bill Levette was behind it. No arrest was made, but Wild Bill would be murdered later on that year. Now, Dennis Meehan had a 10-year run. He was the boss of the Whitehead gang in his teens. So that tells you how successful of a boss he was because, you know, nowadays, you know, a lot of people praise John Gotti, but John Gotti didn't even have a 10-year run. He probably had like a 5-year or six year run as the boss. Alpo, he had like a five or six year run. Rich Porter, in his prime, he had a couple years. Like a lot of guys don't survive. They won't have like a 10 year successful run, but will be praised for the, you know, the things that they do in that short amount of time. So we got gangsters out here that had 20 year runs, 30 year runs, but a lot of people don't talk about that. So it's about the, the longevity. Now, being a successful boss could be very difficult because you cannot continue to go to the same spot you love to go to. You can't go to that food spot that's in the hood. You can't continue on going to that nightclub. You can't be, un you have to be unpredictable. You can't be predictable, you know? So it's all about staying off the FBI radar and staying out of your ops way, staying out of your enemy's way. Those are the two key things to do to become a successful boss. Now, a lot of guys, you know, they like to showboat. They like to be in the media. They do the things for just for the temporary success, not knowing that they're there to lead by example. 
You got to lead by example for the next person that comes after you. But a lot of people don't do it. They'd rather just stick with their three years run. I mean, I know people that just only up for a summer. They had a good summer. And now they just pinch because of sloppiness. You know, back in the day, you know, we're talking about like the 1920s. So, you know, we didn't have social media. But nowadays we have social media where guys like to post every single thing. So, man, you know, if you want to be a boss... You got to do a lot of sacrificing. A lot of sacrifices being low key. You can't be that man up front. So, man, that's it for the night, man. I appreciate all my subscribers. Shout out to all of you guys, man. Like, subscribe. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think about the content. I appreciate all the love. You know, man, this week going to be a good week. You know, we're going to keep this ball rolling, man. I'm out.